Hey, what's going on guys? So after I redid my water cooling loop, I thought it'd be a good idea to double check my overclock stability and at the same time, make a video on how to overclock your CPU. So on my motherboard, the Asus X79 Deluxe, there is a switch that you can flip on your MOBO that has your motherboard overclock your CPU automatically once it detects your temperature settings and whatnot, but it really doesn't matter what position we throw the switch because we're gonna overwrite all those numbers anyway. So what's just as important as having the proper GPU BIOS is checking your motherboard's product page and downloading the latest MOBO BIOS. And once you have a USB drive formatted in FAT32, unzip the motherboard file. It should be a .cap file that you put onto your FAT32 drive. And I could hold down the easy flash BIOS button while booting to flash the BIOS, but alternatively, you can boot directly into your BIOS. And let me zoom really quick. Go to the tools in your BIOS advanced menu and click on your Easy Flash utility. Okay, right here, choose the file path that is your USB drive and see there it is. Should be a .cap file. And it'll ask you to update your BIOS. We're going to go ahead and do it. So processing meter, and I'm gonna cut to when it's done processing. All right, the BIOS update is complete, so I'm gonna restart my system now. So we are back in the advanced options of our BIOS, and if you're on Ivy Ridge E, you're probably just here for some numbers, and this is really rudimentary, but I'm just gonna go over it for the benefit of those who are overclocking for the first time. They might be on Sandy, Ivy, or Haswell. So everything is set to automatic by default. For our overclock tuner, we wanna set this to manual. And the base clock frequency is whatever value you have your core ratio multiplied this by, it's gonna end up with your final overclock. So 45 times 100 is a 4.5 gigahertz overclock. So for your first overclock, I would recommend to, well first, synchronize all cores. You don't wanna have an overclock be different for every core. So synchronize all cores. And in this section, you wanna type in 42. So 42, 4.2 gigahertz is a good starting value for your overclock. And next you're gonna go down to core voltage. I don't use offset. You can use offset and determine a good offset by trial and error, but I use manual because in um, previous overclocks, I have had difficulty maintaining high overclocks due to voltage fluctuations when using offset. So a good starting voltage, if you're on Ivy, Sandy, or Haswell is, let's say 1.22 for the 4.2 gigahertz overclock, but for IVE, you require a lot more voltage for the same overclocks. So for me, what I have found to work is 4.5 gigahertz and 1.44 volts. And for VCCSA voltage, I just leave this at automatic. And now we're gonna go over to our RAM. My RAM is set to run at 1600 megahertz by default. I'm not gonna overclock RAM in this video because you don't really gain very much performance by overclocking RAM. We're talking maybe one frame per second in gaming when you're going from 13, 33 megahertz to 21, 33 megahertz. So for our RAM frequency, we just go to 1600 megahertz or whatever your RAM is set to run by default. And for our timing control, my timings are correct. If you're on 1866 megahertz, for example, you would have a 9, 10, 9, 27, and I, have, I need to put this at two. So yeah, there we go, two, yep, that's correct. Let me double check this really quick, two, okay. Nine, 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 and then 24. Okay, so my timings are good and OC tuner as is, I would disable power saving mode. Everything else is going to have very subtle effects on your overclock stability. If you're going for extreme overclocks, the biggest variable on what you can do to maintain your overclock stability is your voltage. 
For IV Bridge E, I wouldn't go above 1.55 volts because 1.35 is the starting value, so I am within a safe voltage level. If you're on IV, Sandy, or Haswell, I would stay under 1.35 volts. So from here, it's just a matter of trial and error. For whatever overclocking utility you use, whether it's Prime95 or Intel Burn Test, you want to double check, like let it run for five minutes at the overclock ratio that you set. And from there, you can go back to your BIOS and go up by one gigahertz. So remember I said you should start at 4.2 gigahertz, so go to 4.3 gigahertz and see whether you can maintain that for five minutes using the same voltage. All right, so for the past hour and a half or so, I've been running Prime 95 to double check my overclock stability. And I've been downloading Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and in the meantime, I've been playing the Piss Station 4. Now, remember in elementary school when your teachers would tell you that if you didn't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I kind of feel that way about the PlayStation 4, because if I start talking about it, I don't think I'm going to stop ranting. Because Killzone, I mean, it was pretty well publicized that the single player was only going to be 30 frames per second, but I just didn't know that they were going to put in so much motion blur. Somebody put in, I mean, somebody went crazy with the depth of field and motion blur slider, and those are two options that I usually turn off when I play PC games. And the multiplayer, they advertise it as being 60 frames per second. No, it starts at 60 frames per second and drops to... 45 frames per second during combat and it's I, I don't know I mean I kind of feel if you have $400 to spend on entertainment that you deserve to be able to play at 1080p and 60 frames per second instead of being fed that like you know being fed the information from Sony or Microsoft that 30 frames per second is okay to play shooters at no no it's not okay. So I just cut out a lot more of my rant because this is not a PlayStation 4 bash video. This is an overclocking video. So there are two utilities that I recommend to use to double check your overclock stability and make sure that you don't blue screen while doing your overclock. The first is Prime95 and the second is Intel Burn Test. So I'll link both of those in the description. And these two tools are real temp and CPU-Z. CPU-Z kind of gives you all the information you could ever want to know about what your CPU is doing and real temp obviously monitors your clock speed and your temperature. So I'll link these tools in the description as well. But um, different chipsets respond differently to different stress tests. In my experience, Ivy Bridge E has an easier time passing Intel burn tests than Prime 95, but my old Ivy Bridge 3770K had a harder time passing Intel burn test than Prime 95. So with Intel burn test, I recommend doing um, a test about 8 gigs of RAM. Use the um, 8 gigs of RAM setting and put it on... Oh, sorry, no, what am I saying? Yeah, just do a custom setting, not one of the presets. Test 8 gigs of RAM. And this will take you about 45 minutes to double check your stability with Intel burn test. And on top of that, do Prime95 for about 5 to 8 hours. Linus says 24, I think that's a little bit of overkill, especially just for gaming, not necessarily like, you know, workstation oriented computing. So for gaming, I think you should be fine with five to eight hours of Prime 95 and just double check that the um, CPU doesn't make any calculation errors. And if you don't blue screen, you should be okay with the voltages that you select for your GPU clock speed. Now for Ivy Bridge, not I yeah, for um, Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and Haswell, I recommend that you stay under 1.35 volts at any given time. Temperature-wise, you can hit 85 to 90 degrees during a torture test, no problem. But for 24-7 usage in computing, like for most people, I think the most intensive that your CPU could ever get is by rendering in Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere Pro or something. But for um, average computing, I would recommend staying under 80 degrees. Uh, temperature isn't what kills CPUs. There is a fail-safe mechanism that if you hit 105 or so that your computer will just shut off. The hardware is rated for like 115 degrees, but it's still a lot better to stay under 80 degrees during regular computing. 
Um, voltage wise for IV bridge E, I would stay under 1.55 volts, 1.35 is the starting volts. So it just takes a little bit of trial and error in determining what voltage works for what clock speed. Remember earlier, I recommend that, that you start at 4.2 gigahertz. If you're, um, yeah, for anybody start at 4.2 gigahertz and 1.22 volts for IV bridge Sandy or Haswell, but 1.35 for IV bridge E and just raise the core clock multiplier. See if you can run Prime 95 for five minutes without crashing. And if you crash, then raise some of the voltage a little bit by like increments of one, um, how many, uh, yeah, like 10 millivolts. So like 1.23 millivolts, if that overclock works, then that's fine. Raise the multiplier of the clock speed again. So after 4.2 gigahertz, if you have a stable overclock temperature wise and voltage wise, go to 4.3 gigahertz. If you don't crash with that voltage, that's great. You can bump it up again. So it's just a trial and error process of figuring out what voltage works for what clock speed. So yeah, I'll link all of these utilities in the description. Be safe, guys. Don't um, go crazy with the voltages. Keep your temperatures under 85 while benching and 80 degrees during 24 seven usage. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I was informative. Leave a like rating if I was. My name's David and I'll see you next video.